Hi guys, welcome to Weekly Assault. My name is Rai Watsi, one community manager for World Tanks Console, and I have the doctor in the house. Daryl, he is here with us. Hi everyone. Um, <laughs> wearing the most amazing t-shirt ever. Uh, I don't know why he's covering the hoodie, but he has a, he needs a place to put the microphone, so... Um, yeah, yeah. And for whatever reason, I always seem to be wearing an Asana t-shirt. I, I have other t-shirts. Actually, he I doesn't. don't. Yeah, no, I actually Asana is not necessarily the character I have the most T-shirts of. For some reason, I'm always wearing an Asana T-shirt. I think last time someone caught it, and I was trying to hide it. But yeah, you know. there were. Then it went from let's talk about tanks to let's talk about our fa favorite anime. So well, this one's actually a really interesting shirt too because it's specifically the Cure Made edition for her birthday. Okay, never mind. Let's not. <laughs> Let's, let's we not even go there. going towards a very dangerous path. Um, Too much detail. I want to start with a comment made by George Plus, and he says he is addicted to this freaking game. Well, we are happy you are addicked to this game. I just, should, we, should we be happy? No, no, we're, no. Happy. we're happy. It, it is a good addiction. What did you say? Hashtag, Hashtag addicted? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, 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 no, we're fine with it or well, something. No. We're good with it. Oh, Somewhere man, we just, you just said it and oh, then we lost it. I forgot it. It's like, well, well, let's stick around with hashtag addicted. Um, I'm glad you like the game. You know what? Because you are one of the coolest peeps ever as everyone else in that's watching us right now, we're going to send you a code just because you are addicted. So we want to cool. encourage your addiction by playing more tanks. Um, that I doesn't have one sound healthy, but it's okay. Oh, yeah. When you, when, you, when you have your finger on it, they can't yeah, see. Yeah, they can't see. So it's a Wargaming uh, spinner. Ah, there you go. I was... There you go. We can leave it there spinning. Let's see how long it lasts until it stops. Uh, well, we're going to start the show by giving you a couple of reminders. And again, if we botched the name of the tank, apologies, but we were discussing this. Don't forget that the Nomad Samoa SM. Yeah, I think that's right, but I, I can't remember if it was Samoa or Samoa. Well, if someone the on channel could, uh, if someone actually knows the pronunciation, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's funny because I used to always call it like the S tank, uh, like because there's an S35 and everything else too, and I. French names I always avoid pronouncing because one time I was, I wasn't even in France, I was in Montreal and I tried to pronounce something in French and the waitress was really nice but she gave me the most, please stop mauling our language <laughs> that I've ever gotten and after that I just refused to pronounce oh, French whoops. things unless I can act, unless I really know what the pronunciation is. Yeah, so. when you get those stares you're like, mm, yeah, that's when I walk away. Um, anyway, so we have the tank available. I actually played with it yesterday on our Platoon with the Community sessions. It is pretty good. I, I, I really liked it. And again, I don't play French tanks. And so you can tell I had my uh, XP only from, I believe it was two battles. Oh, well, that's really um, good. Yeah, that's so nice. I love the, the auto-loading. It, it was fast, but of course, it's an auto-loader. Uh, reloading the full clip is going to take a couple seconds, as any auto-loader tank. Um, but it was fast, uh, it was easy to maneuver, and it had really strong armor. So I, I, I really liked it. Historically, you know, French, it's really funny too, because there's always, you know, all the stereotypes and everything else. But, you know, French were really innovators in tank designs. Like, you know, everything from the FT-17, which was sort of that first interwar tank, that was the first modern tank because it had the, the layout and configuration that all subsequent tanks would have. Like we get rid of the box, the rhomboid box with all the turrets sticking out of it. And the FT-17 was sort of the first tank for most countries. Like even America has the M1917, which is our contract version of the FT-17. And then what happens is because of the war, you know, of tank development for France gets cut off. But in the post-war period, they've also produced a lot of really cool tanks. Hmm. Oh, Samoa. Okay. Samoa. That, that well, even sounds more correct. So yeah. I, I, thanks, I, Ray Garrett. Yeah, Ray Garrett. Thank you. I, that does sound actually more correct. It sounds accurate. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, it, sounds, it sounds right anyway. But anyway, so French have actually done a lot of you know, innovation in tank design. And, you know, even beyond the, the, in the post-war period, you know, you see a lot of innovation that the French did. And they have the Leclerc tank, which is also a cool tank. Cool. It's a modern tank. Yes. Um, aside from the Nomad Samoa, it correctly. Yay! Uh, we also have the Citadel, which would be available until September 4th. Now, I played Citadel. It's a tiger, and I just could not... I mean, it Oops. has... 
crazy punch. You you're literally punching with this tank. The ammo just went boom and tanks exploding left and right. But it was a little hard for me to control. And then again, I don't play a lot of German tanks, only like lower tiers. But again, this is a Tiger. And when Nick um, Matija was here on Weekly Assault, he was kicking butt with it. So yeah. I guess it's just a, well, a matter of learning how to play with your tanks. Uh, he's he's a Tiger player. Yeah. I'm not. So. Yeah. But um, I, I liked it. It was pretty cool. As you can tell, again, I have more XP accumulated for just a couple of battles in there, too. Um, I, I liked how strong this tank is. Frontal armor was insane. It's not a brawler. It's a sniper. But well, anyway. that, that's my mistake. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, German, German tanks actually have really good optics. So uh, it's reflected in the stats in the sense that they have really, really good... Uh, am I causing problems with my mic? Sorry. Uh, they have really, really good um, you know, sort of um, uh, accuracy, and uh, they have a lot of punch and penetration, although they don't necessarily deliver the same kind of damage. They have such high accuracy. It kind of makes up for that. Anyway, uh, okay, so yeah, uh, we have a bunch of other things. Yeah, to so don't forget, also, uh, German Dream Machines is available until August 27th. You must redeem your points before the operation is over, otherwise you're going to lose them. So redeem them for whatever it is you are trying to get. The highest tier is the King Tiger. Again, another, it's German Dream Machines, so... Make sure you take advantage of that. Um, we also have the needle contract for mercenary tanks available once again, and it will be available until September 3rd. And then don't forget we have expiration dates for the caboose and the stops, and they end on August 20th. Lots of news. Lots of news. Lots um, of things to keep up on. Yeah, and then we also have, we just unveiled this past Friday that we would be hosting Another player gathering at Contini Park in collaboration with the First Division Museum, and they're located in Wheaton, Illinois. Um, I'm going to post the link to the player gathering in chat right now. And it's but interesting I'm because I actually saw some comments when we posted a short video clip of our visit to Cantini. Yeah. And then someone's asking, so are you actually going to do anything there? But it was before the announcement. So. Yeah, we were kind of teasing and preparing you guys. And also for players that don't know about Contini Park and the First Division Museum, kind of to get you to know the locations. I mean, they, the facilities are just so, yeah. they're beautiful. They're amazing. There's plenty of parking. I mean, what, can, what else can you expect from a beautiful uh, park? But then once you walk towards the museum, you have 11 tanks scattered right outside the museum for people to climb, take photos, inspect, and it's just, it's a really nice view, especially if you like tanks, this is the place to go because it's so cool. If you like tanks, you're probably watching this, but <laughs> I, I will say that the one interesting thing that I did not realize is that uh, a lot of these tanks are actually on loan from the U.S. Army, so that gives them the opportunity to display things that a lot of tank museums don't have. For instance, although it's not necessarily in our game, they have an M1 Abrams, which yes. is really cool. Uh, um, you know, it's very rare to actually see those, to get one that you can actually climb on and look at. I mean, kids are climbing over all of these tanks. It's, it's really <laughs> funny, but uh, uh, they have some soft material so that, you know, if you fall, you won't really hurt yourself. But the fact that they have an M1 tank there is also really, really amazing. And they have everything from an M1917 through to, you know, Cold War and then all to the modern period. So it's really cool. Yeah, uh, they went through a really heavy renovation last year in... I mean, it, you can tell in the facilities that it, everything's just high tech, and uh, they have more stuff on in the exhibit areas. It, it just looks amazing, and we are so thrilled and happy that we're going to have a, another player gathering. It's going to be on September 15th, and it's going to start at 10 in the morning, and it's going to end at 4 p.m., uh, we have a lot of events happening. We have uh, coloring tank stations for kids and also um, decorate your tank station. We have um, cardboard tanks for kids to kind of color. And if they want to take them home at the end of the event, they sure can. We're going to have, I believe, five of them. They're big. They're probably bigger than this table. No, oh, so, I haven't seen them. Yet. No, <laughs> they're actually outside the lobby. It's those boxes. They oh, just is need that to what those boxes Yes. <laughs> oh, now I know. So it, it's for the whole family. Then we're also going to have the obstacle course. The museum is going to provide uh, private tours for our players. And we are also going to have developer presentations, which Daryl is going to be presenting. 
Um, you already know what it's going to be about, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, start, I actually have a draft of what I'm going to do. It, it morphed a little bit, but basically I'm going to be talking. Should I talk about now? Yeah, 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 if you want to. So I, I was, initially I was going to do something on grand strategy, and then I started thinking, well, just talking about grand strategy doesn't really get back to tanks. So I decided, although it's a little bit, it's not a cut and dry thing, but I'm going to talk about how things outside the direct battlefield or the tank factory, how they affected the evolution of tanks. So I know that's really obscure, but it's basically the idea that how grand strategy and doctrine really ch determined what tanks were on the battlefield. And this is more important for the early war than later war, because late war, so much more of that was driven by functionality. But early in the war, there's a lot of interesting, you know, because a lot of times people go, well, why is this tank like this? Why is this tank like that? And the reason why, and, uh, and I don't necessarily profess to know all the answers, but I do have, I did some work and research in this area. So I, I'll, I'll give you some of my thoughts and ideas on that. So if you're interested, if Come you, by, yeah. if you're in the Chicago area. If you have questions uh, before or after the presentation, you can also ping him. Uh, Daryl, and well, the volunteers that we have um, helping put the event together, they're all developers. <laughs> so you can literally come up to anyone that's by the table, manning the cool stations. We are all developers, so it's going to be pretty cool. Um, other things we're going to have, uh, I, <laughs> I put together this game called uh, potato sack race. It's good to be a potato. <laughs> yeah, people are gonna love that. Oh yeah, hey, it, it's just it's fun to kind of make a joke about players calling other players potatoes. And then we also have the beanbag artillery toss. We're gonna mm -hmm. have our RNG involved in it as well. There's so, an RNG oh yeah, oh, okay. no, this, it's now I'm curious. There's a lot of things happening, um, and also very cool swag. These are gonna be giving away during the player gathering. And for those who are our SVP through the survey link that I posted, in fact, I'm going to post it again. Uh, the first 200 are going to walk away with goodie bags and game codes. And players from console that attend at the event, they're going to walk away with either the Brazilian Bulldog or the Deadstalker. Wow. Yeah, they're going to get to pick. And that's courtesy from Pengon and the, the entire development team, really. Um, yeah, I asked for, this. these are addicted, I need to put them down. Yeah, put them down. <laughs> In fact, let me spin it again, there you go. Otherwise, I'm not happy. <laughs> Something has to be moving. Um, so yeah, I mean, we look forward to people RSVPing, please, please, please do it, because if you say, I did not RSVP at the event, you're not gonna get a goodie bag that includes a t-shirt. Mercenary t-shirt too. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and at the end of the event, we're going to do a lot of raffles. We're going to give away a console. We're going to give away military mercenary tanks. I'm um, not tanks, uh, bags. I'm thinking. <laughs> I was like, full tank. Oh, well, my God. I want to enter in that <laughs> if that's the case. You're, no, you can't. You're a developer. <laughs> Sadness. Right. Um, but before we went to the player gathering, we kind of paid a visit and... Um, I wanted to ask you what your thoughts were for like the private tour that we did, sure. and they also have a tank that is in being fixed, I believe, or like yeah, something. I think, I think we can't talk too many details. No, yes. too many details about it. it is in the video though. Um, but yeah, they, yeah, they, they allowed us in their garage and they let us inspect a tank that they just received. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, I guess it's interesting. I had been to the the first uh, infantry museum before, and I think people. If you're, if you're not in the military, you not think, well, what, what does that got to do with tanks? But uh, modern um, sort of infantry are mixed between uh, tanks and infantry. So you actually do have tank units that are attached to infantry divisions and things like that. So that's, that's one reason why there's a connection. But the second reason is that it's really interesting that you had someone who left a large endowment. I forgot the size of the endowment, but the size of the endowment is so large and it's been going for so long now that they're able to really maintain a very, very nice facility. And it's very focused specifically on the history, uh, uh, you know, in terms of this one division. But uh, as they say, uh, you know, you'll, if you walk around and you take the tours, they're trying to actually capture the entire experience of, you know, the U.S. military and mm -hmm. trying to give a sense of, and what their goal was to try to make it so that um, veterans who might have trouble talking about some of their experiences connect with civilians who are interested in this stuff. 
And so it's really good. They have really good exhibits. They kind of lead you through from uh, World War One. The exhibit sort of starts with World War One, and that was really touching. I, I have to admit, it's it's <clears throat> it's <clears throat> it can choke you up actually yeah. talking about it. But they talk about sort of. Um, uh, the World War One experience and then the World War Two experience, and then what was interesting is that they're expanding also on the Vietnam era, which which I find very fascinating because that's always been a war that's been very fascinating to me, and it's also interesting that they say that veterans are reaching a point where they feel comfortable talking about it more now, whereas before it was a little bit harder to talk about. So a lot of people are donating things for their museum and actually telling their stories, and that that's all being woven into this this um, exhibit. And they even have a section now where they're dealing with the more recent, uh, recent conflicts. Everything from uh, peacekeeping operations in, in uh, Bosnia to um, to the current conflicts and everything else. So I think that's really interesting, and the museum is really, really fascinating, and it's very well researched. Yeah. I've been to other museums. I won't name any names. I've been to other museums, and some of them are a little bit, I, I want to say, a little too Hollywoody and a little bit flashy. And they kind of gloss over some of the real deep historical issues. What I really appreciate about Cantini is that they're very, very faithful to sort of, you know, historical scholarship along with the idea of museums as places for people to learn and share experiences. So it's really good. I really yeah. liked it. Um, from all the times that we've attended Cantini, I, I was unable to kind of go into the museum because I'm taking care of all the events. Yeah. And just going in there and just, I, I was blown away. Everything that they have in there was amazing. And like you said, it's very touching to, um, and, and they're playing videos and imagery that you can see and you're faced with the fact that this happened and it's there and it's in front of you. And then, yeah. you, I mean, you read about it, you talk about it when you have videos playing about war and it just things that happen, I mean, it, it really, it, it, it's touching, it gets you, and then you sort of understand the level of severity of some of the uh, the situations that happened and the things that people went through. Um, it yeah, it's humanizes you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and the sacrifices they made. And, and um, it was interesting, too, because especially if you get the personal tour, they'll give you a lot more context. Like, uh, a lot of the displays, you know, they're actually visited by veterans that fought in those battles. Uh, not so much World War One anymore, but World War Two. In Vietnam, and then people always have personal stories, and it's always, you know, it's a little chilling, but it's also very, very interesting. And you know, you know, you hear my talk, and everything is kind of talking at a very, very large level. But then it's ultimately, though, what matters is the stories of the individual, and it's the sum of all these individual actions and heroism, and you know, and everything else that really make a, a real story. But it's also but it puts it all in context, which I really like. They, they kind of breach both both the level of the individual and then sort of that the big scale of how things were happening. So it's a, it's a, it's a great museum. Yeah, we are ho really, really hoping that we can see as many of you as we can. I mean, it is a event kind of put together by the console team, but war gamers from warships and warplanes are more than welcome to join us. Uh, I, I'm can agree that we have a lot of our players that play the other titles as well. So come on in, seriously, RSVP, come talk to us. We are very interested to know what what you guys think of the game and you know just chat with our community. That's what we're here for. I, I have to say that um, I haven't been able to go last time because of other, actually for press tour actually. So I, That's right. Yeah, so I missed, the, I missed the previous one, but the one that I went before that, um, Although, you know, yes, this is the World of Tanks console team. Um, within five minutes, I was engaged in a discussion about Imperial Japanese Navy versus U.S. Navy uh, damage control policy in 1942, <laughs> I want to say. Oh and I was, wow, this is a pretty specific conversation <laughs> to be having within like five minutes of me sort of just saying hi, everybody. So obviously, you know, uh, anybody who plays any one of the, the wargaming uh, games it's more than welcome to come. I'm, I'm sure you'll find someone else who has something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we're all war gamers in the end. Um, so I guess it's we are at a point where we can give some codes, aka everyone saying codes, codes, codes. Uh, Stephen Wakefield, what am I drinking? This is just a bottle of water that has uh, slices of lemons. Yeah, it looks in like Mexico lemons. the the yellow ones oh, yeah, are yeah, limes. Yeah, yeah, in, right. Okay, so these are lemons. lemons. The, the yellow. Yeah. Um, oh, that's why, because I was like, what's floating in there? Yeah, okay, yeah, now, no, now I, I, I drink four of these a day, so. That's, that's good, that's very healthy. Keep hydrated, guys.
The more hydration, the better soda. your muscles work. I am the way I am. Oh, wow. <laughs> you're drinking water. You're doing well, good. Well, now I'm drinking water. <laughs> I'm trying to be good. Um, we can give away codes or we can get, give away one Nomad tank. Ooh. So what oh, do you... We, do, should, yeah, we can... You know what? Let's save the Nomad giveaway till the very end because we want you to stick till the end of the stream. Okay. Um, so let's give away codes for seven days of premium. Oh, that's still good. Yeah. <laughs> Am I? Oh, you you think I'm being too generous then? No, 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 no. Seven days is good. Seven days is good. No, it's really good. Oh man, you're gonna get. Daryl stopped it. I know. I'm gonna get threats if I do that, man. No, no. Give give them the prizes. Give them the prizes. Dear Daryl, don't. Don't open your mouth and she talks about the prizes. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, seven days of premium. I'm gonna. Well, architect extraordinaire, he's going to pick up five or six. Let's make six. Six sure. winners. So all you have to do is type hashtag addicted. We're going to stick with it. Okay, we're going to go that with the addicted because that's good. That's great. Uh, in the meantime, do you want to hop, on, hop in a match or do you want me to do it while you talk uh, about the Okay, so today? I'm, what's going to happen, the reason why I never play on <laughs> in the game is because I'm horrible about like actually keeping track of what I'm doing. So I'll jump into a match. Uh, you got to remind me to keep talking because yeah, yeah. I have a tendency to get absorbed and I'm not a very good player. So I just... can e-sport you too because I do e-sports oh, no, commentary. Oh, no, no, please don't e-sport like, because at he's like, what the hell is he, he doing? kind of creeping behind this chaffy and oh my god, it just took so much damage. So uh, my, my big problem is that I, I like to think of myself as a tactical player but then I don't always pick. Like really honestly, I should be just playing mediums all the time because I kind of want to... Like, if I see the map and I go, oh, there's a bad situation on that side of the map, I'll try to go over there. But then it, then my team goes, why are you YOLOing? And I'm like, no, I'm going there because no one else is there. There's an open flank. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That should be the next hashtag. Why are you YOLOing? Yeah, but I, I will say that if you, um, you know, like, as a medium, when you deploy where you're needed and you manage to get a breakthrough to the enemy rear and stuff like that, and you're messing things up from behind, and all of a sudden these heavies and TDs have to turn around to face you and everything. That is like one of the most satisfying feelings. The problem is there's 15 other guys on the other team who don't want you to do that. Yeah. So <laughs> chances are very, very good that you will not be able to do that. But anyway, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Talking about, please don't run into the, yeah, please don't run into the house. That's not. <laughs> The homeowners don't appreciate that kind of stuff. <laughs> so anyway, um, actually, I was drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> did it come up your nose? I hope you don't drown. Don't drown on the stream. Oh wait, hey. I think that tank's expectation one. was to run through the house. I guess it did was. Did not go well. For you. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting too because it's like, what is destructible and what is not? That is a huge debate. <laughs> Uh, because oh, because man. certain things work better than others. <laughs> it's the well, because you can't change. Wow, are you okay? Because you can't <laughs> change sorry. the flow of the map in some cases. Uh, anyway, I mean, just. Uh, I, I laugh at the dumbest things, and that was that was one of. The <laughs> Oof. Oh my god, that tank just. <laughs> you really <laughs> made my day. <laughs> oh, yay! He got hit. <laughs> Don't let them scout, man. Counter scout. Counter scout. <laughs> I'm going to send him a code. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? I totally missed that. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm getting distracted. I have to, I have Your to laughing is like, yeah, wow, I feel like, <laughs> wow. I. <laughs> it was funny, though. I, I do admit. That. <laughs> oh, not a good sign. Oh, I think he, you're good. Oh, no, there's a destroyer. You're not good. But it's on the other side. I think, yeah, you're good. I don't know if I can get a flanking position on there. This is not normally how I play because I usually play a medium. So I'm usually on one flank or the other. You play medium tanks most of the time? Yeah, then? actually. I uh, play the um, heavies. <clears throat> there was a time when I played almost all heavies and I played like IS-6 a ton. But, oh, where is it? Where is it? He's oh, hiding. Ah! Oh, oh, he was right on that rocky. Oh, there's another dude over there. Behind a house. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get a shot on him. Back there? No. Huh? Ooh, close. Thought yeah, people shot. are getting good uh, covering. Oh, there's. I think there's a destroyer slightly behind you. 
behind. How the yeah. hell did he get over there? Hey, come on, guys. There, that. No, not that one. A little bit to the left. Straight ahead. He, he just disappeared. Yeah, I know, but I, I don't want to get... I, I don't want my rear to get yeah. shot. Oh, oh, like that. Because I'm trying to reposition. Oh, yeah, these guys oh, broke God. through the flank. Oh, it's like right there, too. I know. I got an angle, but... M6. I want to protect our, our... Did our artillery already bite it? Mm, nope. Okay. It's still alive, though. Come on, come on. Ah! Damn it. Yeah, I'm going to get eaten alive here. You can do it. You this is why... See, and you notice I stopped talking, too. No. Like, I totally clam up when I'm... Come on. Keep them spotted, at least. See, I'm playing a medium's role. This is really ridiculous. Sorry, oh, he's guys. Gonna creep up. Oh, yeah. hey, you got his strike though. At least yeah. you got yeah, see, lit this damage. Why, this is why you don't let me play on the stream. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Wesley Larkin, rival only plays heavies for the KV1. Yep. <laughs> well, I I, I, I tend to be uh, I tend to be a more positional player, so I'm not really um, I'm a, a less of a um, tank on tank person. I'm usually more like. Do we have a tank in this position, or do we have a tank in that position? <sighs> that fits my disposition, but it's always not necessarily make for very impressive it's gameplay. It's slightly even now. Let's see. I, no, uh, nope. no, no, no. Let's go back to. <laughs> well, we might win that one, but I don't think so. We'll we'll check on the. Yeah, we'll check on the after action report. Anyway, uh, so um, yeah, and I guess. The presentation that I'm going to be doing is sort of along those lines. Everyone always talks about tactics, so I decided um, tactics are really important and really interesting, but you usually don't talk about strategy, and it's weird because strategy ends up playing a big role in why things are the way they are. You know, typical example is that if you look at early war like British and French tanks, um, they're actually really they're good tanks, but they were designed for the infantry support role. And uh, you, you look at things like uh, German, uh, German tanks. You know, Germany fought a lot of its, quote unquote, blitzkrieg and decisive battles with Panzer IIs and Panzer IIIs, and like a smattering of Panzer IVs. So although we think of them as being sort of the lightning warfare and Panthers and all these late war tanks, a, a lot of the places where the tactics came into place were actually er, um, early war, when the, actually the armor wasn't necessarily any better. And that has to play in with doctrine and strategy. Anyway, we got some winners. Ooh, all right. Um, ah, we're going to start this match. I loaded it with the Nomad. Somewa. Somewa. <laughs> now yeah. I want to say it now that we know how to pronounce it. Now I want to just keep saying the name of this tank over and over. So we have our winners for seven days of premium. And we are going to say congratulations to William Sawyer, James Barnes, J. Rowe Tor Torgerson? Torgerson. Yeah. Uh, jo Joshais or Hosias, Hosias, Hosias Graham, Graham Cones, Tommy, and Big Big Neitzel. Neitzel. I can always rely on Sorry. you. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, yay! Well, congratulations, guys. Uh, yes, congratulations. Even if we don't pronounce it right, you'll you'll get it. So. <laughs> Um, in order for you to collect your seven days of premium, I need you to send me a message via World of Tanks Console Facebook messages so I can contact you after the stream and then send you your codes. Yay! Happiness. All right, now I'm fully loaded. Oh, the, uh, for auto loaders, it just the reload sometimes kills me. That's why I slightly stopped playing the. Um, oh, see, even I forgot the. Um, Tier 10 American T57. Well, it's interesting because uh, the reload times are always like a big debate. But uh, if you have actually seen the size of tank rounds, they're gigantic, right? And that's that's part of the problem. With autoloaders, like I believe some of the French autoloaders, some of their ammo storage is actually outside the tank. So in theory, you know, when you run out of the, t uh, the internal stores, you're actually <laughs> supposed to be going outside the tank and to get more ammo and you can imagine that a Ooh. takes time b if you're in kind of a fight that's probably really really difficult but um uh you know that's where that's how the uh, reload times come came to be in terms of the game uh it's not always a literal time but of course you know there's a 
there's a question of where is the ammo stored in the tank, how accessible is it, how easy is it to lift up around, things like that. So that's definitely why the smaller calibers reload faster. Um, I think that that's a pretty common thing, but just something that has to be reiterated once in a while. And auto loaders are interesting in, in and of themselves because they sort of, usually they're in some form that's like a clip or a magazine or something like that. So they have to be kind of loaded differently. Or the machine has to kind of load up the rounds. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ooh. Nice. Of course, you I got know, their he's attention. Gonna see me. Yeah, ah, 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 I was going to ah, say, but you got run their away, attention. Run away. Yeah, yeah. Ow, ow. I'm going to hide on this rock. Maybe I'm not covering well enough, but you know what? I think I'm also going to reload because I only have one round. I kind of love having the clip loaded. Yeah, I think it's safer. That's the thing with, uh, I think that's the tension with uh, auto loaders is like, to know um, when to kind of pause and reload and um, back off from conflict. And of course, you know, if you're hunting a autoloader, that's when you know you need to go into hunt mode <laughs> or advanced mode is when someone's reloading because they have such a long reload time. I feel like they went into the city, but... Yeah, your to... team is doing pretty well, though. The kill, kill ratio is really good right now. Positioning-wise, you guys are holding a line, so I don't think it's bad. They might be pushing, considering that they're at a three tank disadvantage. They might be pushing a bit hard. Although, positionally, the city does look kind of, oh, nope, I take it back. <laughs> it's like, well, you're toast. Yeah, I mean. Oh, oh, oh but it's oh, a Gurnage, oh, and I don't think I'm going to do any yeah, damage Yeah, that's there. not going to. Oh, now I gave away my location. He sees me. Oh, no, oh, no, he's looking. <laughs> This Gurnage uh, is after uh, yeah, me! I, was gonna say, I don't know that run, you're going to get away. Thanks for the faith of you. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Uh, uh, I think we're on the same position that we're a little sluggish. Um, oh, but interesting. now I'm also going to encounter this group of fellas over here. Yeah, what, Yeah, there's somebody also on your flank, too. Yeah. Oh, but he's engaged yeah. with somebody else, so it's probably okay. Oh, uh, oh, there's oh, a Greenwich right yeah, there. Yeah, there he is. He that, caught up. No, nah, he definitely kept pursuing you. Uh, Especially because... Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. It's hard. Oh, <laughs> anyway, your team... Hmm, yeah. It's slightly what even. Happened I mean, they that, have to take that out that... The town, the town got rolled at some point. Like, it was looking pretty good, but somehow, I guess the actual battle might have not... That's the one thing about the strategic map is that you have a rough idea of how the situation is, but you don't know specifically what's going on on a tank-to-tank -tank basis. That's a little difficult. All right. Go back to the garage. Let's answer a couple questions. In fact, I'm seeing oh. one from Martin Marsh, uh, Loton. Yo, with lots of exclamation marks. Sorry if this has been asked, we've uh, asked, but I didn't finish my big top contract in time due to work. Uh, 91K is hard to get, so... My progress is my progress gone forever, or will I be able to pick up again one day? Please help. Um, unfortunately, once the contract is over, it resets. Uh, the only reason it cannot keep track of uh, the progress is that throughout the release of the contracts, the development team evaluates some of the tasks. So, if just in case there are changes to the contracts, then you know we wouldn't be able to kind of. Yeah. adjust to whatever was accumulated so all contracts have to be reset again i'm so sorry about that oh, i wish i could do something to help but that's pretty much the dna of the mercenary contracts at this time yeah and they are constantly being evaluated so yeah um we also had ryan ryan james dillashaw he says that uh, thank you for improving the map rotation as of this past last week tuesday we had Dragon, uh, no, it was Sacred Valley War and Dragon Ridge. Yeah, I, the whole map rotation thing, I know that that gets the subject of heated debate on the forums, but a lot of times there's a multitude of reasons why things get rotated in and out. It's not, oh, yeah, it's not just, uh, it's not just because we added a new feature or something like that. <laughs> a lot of other concerns, too. Um, can we get mercenary camo on other tanks? No, the camo that is in mercenary tanks, it's for the mercenary yeah. tanks only. Um, and that also includes the invisible one. 
Uh, but Jeff Gregg did say that he would like to add that for other tanks. Um, nothing, I really don't know what the status of that is, but he made it into a ticket that's on his plate. So definitely something, something coming up. So what's your, between the two, which one's your favorite? Uh, Secret Valley or Dragon Ridge? Oh, Sacred Valley or... I... Mm. Sacred Valley is Korea, right? Sacred Valley is Korea. And Dragon Ridge is... So Sacred Valley War, the thing I like about mm -hmm. it is atmosphere-wise, look-wise, it looks amazing. Like, it, mm -hmm. you really get that sense of, like, 1950s kind of combat. But Dragon Ridge also has such nice terrain. You're going to say Rice Paddies. Yeah, it's, yeah. You, but okay. Aside from just the rice patties, I know you're you're rice patty obsessed. <laughs> aside from that, I think it also has a good atmospherics, and it's got an interesting kind of inter, uh, interplay on, in terms of like how that map divvies up. Uh, so I'm gonna go with aesthetics this time. But if you ask me again, I might reverse my answer. But <laughs> I'll probably go. We'll go with Secret Valley on this one. Yay! Um... Let's see. I just saw a really good oh, question. Oh, well, we got a question up there, too. Oh, cool. Oh, there you go. That's the one that I was looking for. Thank you, Archie. Cruz Javier, when is the new update coming out? And Archie replied soon. Thank you, Archie, for the reply. Yeah, we uh, have it from the production team, so yeah. <laughs> We've been hinting it's coming. Oh, God, I hate to use the word soon, but it is very soon, so... Just I, keep I, an eye on, on our website. It's very frustrating because we, we want to give more exact information, but there's a multitude of reasons why we can't be really, really specific because of the way things work in terms of approvals and all this other stuff. Well, yeah. And, and marketing and everything. And so. we also address the fact that the updates need to go through certification, which is the approval process from our first party partners. Yep. So yep. we create the bill that you guys get at update dates, mm -hmm. but it has to go through Microsoft and Sony. And they have to, the bills have to uh, go through a series of tests. Yep. Um, that's what it's called certification. They certify that it's yep. good to go for everyone to, you know, install it in their consoles at home. So certification can be a little time consuming because it is a big bill and yep. it has to go through a lot of stages. So. Yeah, and, and, and also not just that, but then we have to align up the staff and everything else to do the server switchovers. Uh, which is uh, and do all the installs and then that's all lined up with pushing the content out to the first party so that the, the, those builds can be pushed to everybody's kit. So it involves a lot of people and so we have an idea of when it's going to come out, which is why we say soon, but we don't always have control over the exact date. And also, honestly, it's also because sometimes, um, you know, there's something planned that we can't talk about just yet because they're, they're going to do, you know, extra marketing around it and everything else. And so that's also part of the reason. Yeah. Oh. Uh, James Wolfie, can we get MREs for crew food? Uh, MREs are too recent. <laughs> In fact, we, um, you just got a box of... I just got a crate of actual... <laughs> and, you know, it's really funny because at first I thought, oh, these are repacked. But these are actual, mil this time we got actual military pack MREs, which is cool. Um, except uh, I can't quite do it just yet. We'll have to wait a week or two. Yeah, uh, the, your partner in crime. Partner, uh, partner MRE in crime. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's kinda, PTO. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's out of the office for a little while. Um, for good reasons. Yeah, for very good reasons. Let's see, when, well, we already answered that. When are we getting new mercenaries? That along is soon, along with the update. Yeah, so, it's soon as well. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, any special tanks for the 20th year anniversary? No, but we do have um, events going through um, different channels. So keep an eye on all of the wargaming channels for warships, warplanes, World Tanks PC, and, you know, social media as well. Can't believe it's 20 years. That is insane. Yeah, yeah, That's pretty yeah. cool. It's really funny, too, because a lot of people don't realize that the company's actually been around that long. They think specifically of the recent titles. Uh, I actually remember it, uh, some of the products were only released in uh, the, sort of the CIS region, which is why not everyone knows about them, but I remember actually 
getting one of their games early on when it was still primarily a CIS release. And I was thinking, hey, these guys are kind of cool. And, and so I, I've been following Wargaming for a long, long time. So it, but honestly, it's not as well known outside of the CIS region until more recently. But now, of course, we're all over the place. So. Oh, I look. Uh, Mark Clark. Hey, this is my first time joining a live weekly assault. Shout out to Mark Clark. Hey, Yay. welcome. Yeah, and thank yeah, you we, for joining. We changed today's time. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, apologies for just having the stream a little earlier than usual, but we have a company meeting. I like everyone and developers have to attend. So it, it you we usually have these meetings like what every two months or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So just to keep an update of what everyone's doing and how the game is progressing and so on. So, so it's hard for us to miss it, and you know honestly, it usually doesn't co coincide with the stream. So it's okay, but just this time it happened to coincide. So sorry, we're at a different time. <laughs> Uh, I know a couple of you have been asking about Italian tanks, and those are on Leo's uh, horizon. I know we already said that. It, basically, we already have the progress of World Tanks PC, so most likely than not, some of those tanks will come to console. And um, Pingot had already answered that, yeah, uh, we'll definitely would like to have Polish tanks and you know Italian tanks in the game. Um, we talked about Italian yeah, tanks. Yeah, I mean, we've actually said this yeah. too, right? Like, when have we not, I guess the best way to put it is, it may not be right away, but when will mm -hmm. we not implemented a tank line? Like, I mean, eventually we'll get it. It's just, like I said, um, the, their data format and everything else, just because they release it doesn't mean all of a sudden you can just press a button and it'll appear in our game. They're actually, they're actually built differently, and so we have to convert. Again, um, that's because the console version is built from the ground up, you can tell I just did a press tour. Uh, it was built <laughs> from the ground up and is not just a port of PC. So because of that, um, we have our own set of tools that we have to push all the tanks through. And then we have our own balance that we have to be concerned about. And so, you know, it makes a lot of work for Leo, and wh which is why he had to work over the weekend and everything. Rene Martinez is asking a very curious question. Um, have you played Italian tanks on PC? Yes. What is the consumable? Because Renee is saying oh. spaghetti and wine for Italian. <laughs> that's, well, that would be appropriate, but it's... Uh, and I, delicious. What the heck was it? I don't remember now. Oh, geez. It's been Ooh. a while. I'll have to look. Um, I, honestly, I sometimes I when I'm just starting to go through a line, I don't add the consumables until I'm comfortable with the tank. <laughs> so I... So the, the interesting thing about the Italian tanks, too, is that like they had a lot of tanks, but a lot of them were tankette class. So it's really hard to put tankettes into our game. So um, uh, the, the pr progress of the Italian line, if you actually look at the PC side, is that it's incremental upgrades of some a handful of the tanks. Because until you get to like the P40, there's just a handful of tanks that you can really call uh, a, a World of Tanks class because a lot of them were sort of infantry support type things like you know like the CV33s and stuff like that they're just too the the gun caliber wouldn't pierce a, a, a tank it's part of the problem I literally wrote this down as Archie posted it we're in sync Archie uh, Tim Sub when are we when are you guys going to give flag vouchers away for ops um, that is not up to us that's up to the event scene but I can definitely take your comments um, to them it's been a while since we've given flag vouchers, so maybe it's time. I, I kind of like I, the way I, you think. Yeah, I know, that, but there's a rate that they can do that. I know that. Yeah. Awesome. So they gotta look into that. <laughs> the rate is now. <laughs> yeah. Right now. <laughs> right now, um, as it is the time to give away the Nomad Samoa. Mm. One. We're gonna give away one to cool. a lucky tanker who's actually watching us right now and plays the game. So in order for you to win the tank, you have to type in the amount of points that you have right now that you've accumulated for the German Dream Machine up. I want to know how many points. Um, I already saw a couple of you saying that you already redeemed your points for the King Tiger, meaning you already have more than a thousand points. Good for you. I, I am curious to know. So type in the number. Bleep, bleep, bleep. I think I have 200 something, which is not a lot, but um, there we go. See, exactly. Vic, he uh, has 245. Mateo's 801. Nice. Holy cannoli. See, I think the other problem too is that for me, I'm always split between which platform am I going to do what event on. 
because I have both, you know. So that's always confusing for me. Do you just end up always picking one or the other? <laughs> do you end up picking one or the other? Or do you, you you have to alternate too, right, all the time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, so it's really hard. I, for me. I stick with the Xbox. Okay, so. that's fair enough. I mean, for for those kind of ops, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm always like. That's the one, one that has be? most of my uh, tanks. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna undim it. Uh, Matthew 163, Ryan James Dillashaw 309, uh, Brian 530, Michael Bryan 700 ish. Wow. <laughs> uh, Raimunda Sanosi's 910. Easy going with the E75. Oh, that's kind of cool. I should have also asked that, like, what tanks they're tank? using. Yeah. Yeah. For the next one, uh, James Penrose 1026. That is insane. I mean, that's pretty awesome. You can accumulate as many points as you want. And if you already earned the King Tiger, you can keep accumulating and redeem those points for another tank and more premium time. So this is one of the best uh, Yeah, I like, I like this, the way that th these are structured. I think that they give you a lot of flexibility in picking you know, what your reward is. <laughs> Uh, Rush Nichols, 205. Don't get a lot of time to play. 200 is pretty good. No, that's good. Yeah. Tom, 576. And Philip Jackson, 294. Wow, you guys are, that's good. That's awesome. Yay. That's always cool to hear. Don't forget that the operation ends August 27th, so you still have time. Well, seven days? No. I can't math. No, it's like a week and a half. Ten days. Yeah, we Eleven can, days. Eleven days. Yeah, you got time. Yeah. Still do it. So Archie Tech Extraordinary, he's going to pick the winner. Um, I don't know if I, I want to do the uh, drum roll. So what tank are you currently playing on right now? Oh, what have I been playing recently? I've been really, I've kind of fallen back to my Soviet mediums. Ooh, yeah. So Soviet power. It depends on whether I'm doing... Um, which tier I'm playing, but I'm kind of hanging out, you know, tier nine-ish. So what is that, my T-54? Uh, when did you make the change? Because last time you were playing American and then French. Oh, what, what, happened, well, what happened is that every once in a while I mix it up because I go, like for a while, the, the funny thing is that I, it's really weird and this is very embarrassing to say, but like, PC, I played a lot of artillery, but then console for for like three years, I didn't play a single artillery. Like I had zero artillery battles, and I looked at it, I go, why the hell? I I don't even remember. There was a reason initially why I said, oh, I'm not going to play artillery for a little while, and somehow I just forgot about it, and I just kept going up the tank lines, and I go, wait, I need to play artillery. So for a while, then I was actually doing Soviet artillery, and then that's and then I every once in a while I'll do some of the other lines because I'll go. Mm, I, I haven't picked up a tank here or there, but then I end up always going back to Soviet mediums. I think that's my big, that's my favorite, though. I just like them. Especially, especially like tier 9, 10, because those are like the quintessential, uh, that era of tank. It's sort of like the T-55 design and the T-64 design. I mean, those are just like, well, it's T-62, but those are the quintessential, you know, sort of tanks of the Cold War, which I really love. Oh, I want to point out that Philip Jackson's birthday is tomorrow. Mm. Congratulations and happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy early birthday. I hope we were the first ones to congratulate you. Unless you know people on other, uh, like across Times. the international date <laughs> You get it in advance. Ooh, we have our winner. Oh my God. Uh, this is actually a new winner because I don't recognize the last name. Which means he's a new viewer. Oh my gosh, exciting. So congratulations, or again, I'm going to repeat the prize. It's going to be the newly released Nomad Samoa, which is a tier 8 French tank. And the tank goes to Matthew Fifield. 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 Matthew Fifield, and he said he has 163 points. Go for it. Matthew, congratulations. You are going to walk away with a brand new Congrats. tank. Congrats. Yeah. Cool. I saw a couple of them earlier in a match. I was like, oh, the players are uh, really enjoying this tank. 
Um, our community contributors also posted a, a video about it, so check their channels out. We have a list of community contributors that stream frequently in the forum. So stop by, say hi, subscribe. Super cool peeps. And um, I think we are slightly running out of time. Um, let's see. All players are asking for custom flags. And... Can we have some modern tanks? Hmm. Yonel Ogrina is asking. Modern tanks. So um, I will say this. Uh, the, the one thing with modern tanks is that the in the post-war, especially once you get into like the 50s, 60s, 70s, tank combat changes a little bit. So, um, you know, the two strategies are introduce a higher tier. Or possibly you have to think about like how it affects the mechanics of the game and stuff like that. And so those are considerations. It's not like we don't know about the latter tanks. Some tanks are already kind of, you know, a little bit pushing into that period at tier 10. So it's something that's always being looked at. Hmm. I think that's a safe way to put it. Dumb. I think they're cool. <laughs> would be nice i mean right now we have the mercenary tanks mm -hmm. um and yeah we did say we were going to expand the mercenary tech tree so we definitely have some coming oh, up oh there's there, there you know the that that machine keeps running and <laughs> <laughs> poor leo well <laughs> it's a lot of work for him <laughs> uh I, I was having a conversation with players in the forums um about how many mercenary tanks are out there um and the comment was like well, I see two or three mercenary tanks in game and seeing two or three, that's a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. you're talking about 10 tanks that were released um, last month on the 27th, or the 26th, I'm sorry. And you're putting 10 tanks against, what is it right now? Like 400? 600. Six, well, yeah, yeah it's, 600 it's a, it's quite a few. 610 tanks? I want to say it's tanks? like 600 tanks or yeah. something like that. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's quite a few tanks, so that's pretty healthy percentage. Yeah, that is a healthy percentage, meaning a lot of players are fulfilling these contracts, and yep. they're uh, certainly, you know, playing them because you're, you're obviously seeing a bunch of them in matches. So the well, more tanks that we release, more contracts that you guys can earn for free, I think that's great. You know, I forgot to mention... Uh, mm -hmm. Since the last time I was on the stream, I actually got to drive a tank for a press event. Oh, that's right. You did. Yeah, I the, to drive a tank in um, uh, Minnesota, Minnesota. Yeah, in Minnesota. And I have to say, uh, yeah, actually handling the real thing. Video game, you know, you, it's really dangerous to say you, you learn how to do things with video games. But it's weird because it really does prepare you for a lot of things. <laughs> the, thing that, the thing that's most difficult is like you're off axis driving. So... Like, you have a tendency to drift to one side or the other. But in this case, I was driving an Abbott. And um, it was amazing how I was like, on one hand, yeah, definitely, it's the real thing. So the stakes of me running off the road are far greater than me going, oops, this is like, oh, no, I just you know ran into a tree or something. But uh, it, it's actually interesting how, like, playing the game gets you mentally prepared for what it's like to be driving around with this gigantic... <laughs> you know, like 40 ton vehicle and in and, and your, and you know, it's so funny too, cause they're like, you're being, trying to be cautious and they're like, no gun it. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there are people on, you know, there's people on the top. I go, I hope they don't fall off and you're gunning it and everything else. It's quite, if the owner experience. says gun it, you, you, you do gun it. it. <laughs> you gun it. Yeah, that's, so I was like, okay. And I gunned it. So. I had no idea that that was the first time you've Dro drove a yeah, tank. No, cause right. usually it's the guys who are doing art and audio that, need to reference all that stuff so for me it was that was my first time so it was really interesting that's so cool yeah yeah it's uh it's an interesting thing it, it's an interesting experience um you'll probably start seeing articles in the press about it so keep an eye out for that Yay. kind of stuff um albert sam give one away on twitter right <laughs> uh we are actually giving one away on twitter and i believe we're going to select the winner before the end of day so check console cool. Twitter page and, you know, you get another chance to see if you can win the Nomad Samoa. ta -da. Um, Yeah, this is the end of the stream. I want to remind everyone that the tank is available in-game as well as the Citadel until September 4th. 
German Dream Machine operation till September 27th, and don't forget the caboose and the stubs, contracts, the mercenary tanks, end on August 20th. So hurry up if you're kind of close to the end in stages six or seven, hurry, hurry up because the tanks, uh, the contracts are gonna go away and then all that progress is going to be removed. So oh, yeah. And don't forget, don't forget to join us at Catini as Yes, well. I'm gonna post the link once more so um, I, know, I know that this is a regional thing, but really, if you if you can come out there, I think we've had times where people have driven quite a bit to actually get to the event. So yeah. Uh, I forgot the name of those guys. Soviet they, Death drove eight hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and then we have people from uh, Minnesota. Uh, yeah. Oh, what was his name? Redneck Italian and his family, they drove, I believe, four hours yeah. to uh, so get to the player game. I'm not saying you drive really far, but if you're kind of in the area, please come by. Yeah. It'll be really great to sort of talk, and I can bore you with my history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Never, Daryl. Your, your stories are always interesting. So seriously, if you can, please, please, RSVP. Again, the first 200 people that RSVP and are pr present at the event are going to walk away with a goodie bag that comes with a lot of Wargaming merchandise and unique war World of Tanks mercenary, I can't even talk now, uh, merchandise as well. And we are going to raffle a lot of cool things. You get to spend time with the developers and just have fun with everyone, family members. You can enjoy the rest of the park. Um, Hopefully we'll have a beautiful day. That is I my so. wish yeah, that's, because yeah, that's the only thing that's in it the never air. rained before. Yep. So hopefully, oh, knock, knock on wood, man, knock, knock on wood, wood, that it doesn't happen. You know, and at all. And the museum itself is great, and not yes. just the military side of it. It's also a, a really pretty park and museum yes. and arboretum and all this other stuff. So, so there's cool. lots to see. So I just want to say thank you to everyone at Cantini Park and the First Division Muse Museum. Shout, shout out to Ian Richardson, who is the vehicles historian, as well as Gail Piper. Uh, she is the events coordinator um, at First Division Museum in Cantini Park. Thank you so very much for allowing us to have the player gathering there. We are looking forward to having our players there. And don't forget that next week, Thursday, 3 p.m. Central Time, is Weekly Assault. I, Daryl, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And I'm going to see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.